Yo, what's up, everyone? It's Josh Tonga here, and I'm pumped up about today's guest, and his name is Greg Doyle. Greg Doyle is a former professional classical musician who first discovered meditation primarily to combat stage fright, and in 1999, he awakened to the reality of the phenomenon of astral projection, and this life-changing experience expanded his consciousness, altering the very perception of his being at a fundamental level, which then ended up changing the course of his career. And Greg is the author of the book, Awakening the Giant Within, a personal adventure into the astral realms, which details his experiences in the astral world. And he holds astral travel workshops, meditation classes, and offers healing sessions as a Reiki master in Brisbane. Did I say it right? Brisbane? <laughs> so, cool, cool. So Greg, it's nice to have you on the show. Great to be here, George. Thank you. Awesome, man. So we'll get right into it. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and what your life was like before that unexpected Saturday morning in 1999. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's so true. I tell you, I was just living the good life. Um, <laughs> look, not really. Look, I, I was just, I was a musician and um, I had meditated since my 20s. I remember my, my mom gave me a book on um, just basic kind of transcendental meditation. And I remember finding that absolutely amazing how I could, you know, uh, go from being pretty anxious, tense state before I performed, for instance, to feeling really relaxed. I remember thinking to myself, oh, wow, this this meditation thing is really good. I just found that just for me, this this notion of um, going inside oneself and and kind of feeling good for no real reason, for some reason was a was a big thing for me. And um but I'd never I never thought to to explore any kind of dimensional realities or spiritual notions of where meditation could take me. I had none of that whatsoever. It was just I used it just to relax, you know. And right. um it really it was, yeah, it was, as you say, in ninety nine it happened and um it was just mind blowing, you know. I I never forget I remember thinking at that time in my life, someone recently asked me, well, how was your state of mind, you know, before it happened? And I remember thinking a little bit um, kind of that, that question inside my mind was, is that all there is? It was a feeling of not necessarily being jaded with life, but I just thought, you know, okay, you've got your music career, you're doing this, you're doing that. Um, I wasn't consciously um, looking for something, but I think if I look back at my mind, I think that that a, a healthy question mark. I've always been um, kind of uh, in a in a healthy way, kind of a skeptic through my life, just sort of looking at things, questioning things. What is it? What's actually going on? And um, then that first experience I had was this light coming, seemed to come into my forehead. Um, there was a wind in my ears. Took me took me. It came into my heart as well. It made me feel great. And then took me down to. A, a wormhole, what, what I discovered to be a wormhole later because I kind of researched this stuff and then I went to another planet and it was like really full on stuff, you know. And it was so, the thing is these early experiences I had were so real, so left field that I thought, wow, it, it just shook my reality and I realized that there was something more going on. Right, right. Okay, so I mean, before we get into the, all the details, uh, like how would you define astral projection or an out-of-body experience? Look, it's a feeling of, um, you know, there's so many layers of that definition. It's a feeling of, there is a feeling of movement often with astral projection, a feeling of uh, like you know that your physical body is there, but it's a feeling, it generally happens when you're sleeping. Um, and it's a feeling of movement, like vibrations coming and move outside of the body. You have a, you have a feeling of detachment from the physical self, you definitely have that feeling. You you also have your mortal mind, you know, uh, which is functioning. But you, for me, the astral experience, I tend to go into experiences or places that seem more real than the third dimension. So my my senses are heightened. So to me, that's, and it's also my, how do you put it? Um, I feel well. I really analyze my mind in these states, and I'm sort of, I'm kind of in a mindset where I'm beyond fear, or it's a feeling of, um, you, you kind of shake off these kind of um, mortal kind of uh, um, shells, or you just know that there's something else, and you know that yourself, Josh. I can imagine you've yeah. 
experience stuff similar. So it's a, it's a feeling of going into a greater sense of knowing, a greater sense of being, and even um, I think having um, journeyed a fair bit, I think I'm actually getting in touch with a higher state of my of my consciousness. So I'm moving from 3D into a higher vibratory sense of self, if you like. Nice. So it's not just traveling in this dimension where you could travel in other other dimensions in the universe, are you saying? Mm, yeah, and that's more profound. I found that I call this kind of real time if I'm traveling in this like a ghost, but in the other, yeah, these other feelings, you feel more elevated. You just you sense um, a tremendous sense of peace and well-being and a sense of otherness in terms of yourself connected to something greater. And you, it's it's almost like, it's almost like if you think if you're a dreamscape, like if you're in a dream yourself and, and you know how you have a lucid dream, you wake up in the dream, it's almost like I feel the human 3D form is a dream figure for a higher aspect of myself. And I have the feeling, I have the feeling that, my, that, that my higher self is, is kind of wanting me to wake up through experiencing these, these higher realms. So why do you think this happened to you? Though? Oh boy, you're asking good question. You get straight to the point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, after all these years, right? I mean, you had your career. You weren't into this stuff at all, I'm assuming, right? So, I mean, you just did the meditation just for to combat your stage fright and for, you know, get rid of anxiety. But, I mean, like, all of a sudden you have this. And as you mentioned in your bio, you know, like this changed everything for you. So, did you have an answer of like, why do you think this happened to you? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I kind of been sure. Look. <laughs> You're quite right. Like even people that come to my Astro workshops, I think, you know, why are you here? I would never go. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just. I mean, in the best in the in the best possible sense. I'm thinking, wow, how do you know about this? Why are you interested in this? So, so more and more, um, you know, I'm even shown in the astral. I'm shown. I remember before I started teaching um, astral projection to people, I was shown myself teaching astral projection to people. It's sort of like. Okay, get to get to your question. Why? Um, I think I've also been shown uh, kind of past lives when I when I didn't even believe in past lives. I did not believe in them, but I didn't. And I was showing them very clearly. And I think it's kind of a crude kind of energy. I, what I mean is you accrue uh, uh, through experience certain things. So I think it's just this lifetime. That's what I'm doing. So I, I see those experiences as early ones, like a, like there's a time capsule. Uh, within my field that just happen to wake up at that time, you know, and and I feel um, for, for a long time I was frustrated. I, I, I wanted to get back into music and I remember I had a great opportunity um, a couple of years after I started astral traveling of, of really stepping up in the music world. And I remember conducting this concert and I could feel these these hands that were pulling at my arms and pulling them away from um, out of my control, I thought, oh boy, and I really started to sweat. And I realized there's something going on here. I'm having all these out of body experiences that feel so, so real. I'm, I'm, it's, it's causing me to often speak my truth in situations that perhaps I should be more diplomatic. And people say, why did you say that? That you know, that's not so good for your career. And then all of a sudden, I had these, these invisible hands moving my arms, and I was supposed to be conducting. And I remember thinking, okay, I give up. I give in. I will, I will go this way. And it was almost like. Uh, feeling hostage to it, to be honest, in the beginning, and then I kind of let go, and then it was kind of good. And it, it sounds cliche, this notion of surrender. But it really was that. It was a feeling of okay, for some reason, this weird stuff's happening. I'm just going to go with it now. I'm just not in you know, a path of least resistance. You know, we're, we're taught, we're taught as humans to, to fight, 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 headbutt, headbutt, headbutt. And I realised maybe I don't have to do that. Maybe I just go the way I'm being kind of pulled in many ways and uh, you know and then I'd often hear my higher self speak to me like it was I hear my my own voice speak to me like through a resonator and he seemed to know more than I would so I, I recognize it to be an aspect that's when I realized it was something spiritual going on or loosely what I would loosely um, refer to as spiritual because I was hearing my own voice speak to me and he seemed to be able to guide me on experiences not always my own voice but sometimes and I thought well there's something going on here. I, I do have what we know, this notion of the higher self. Even a lot of these new age expressions I wasn't into. And I'm, I'm still not, I wouldn't call myself a new age kind of guy. But but that's what happened. And um, 
it totally changed my life because it, it put my put me into this way of consciousness and um, energy healing and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And yeah, so things just kind of unfolded and just you were guided in this direction, I guess. Right, and as oh, you yeah. said, you just surrendered to it, just kind of went with the flow. So, I mean, yeah. what, what would you think the purpose? What is the purpose of astral traveling? Because when I I have conversations about this like all the time, like almost almost every day when I meet up with different people. And for some of them, they get really excited. Other people, they're just kind of thinking, what's the purpose of all that? Because for them, they wanted to, they want to be grounded in this reality, you know. And even last night, you know, I mean, some people were, were talking about how they do a lot of drugs. And, <laughs> you know, they have like these uh, hallucinations and everything. But they talk about that that's kind of like losing touch with reality but now you're you're talking about astral traveling i mean it could be stuff going on in this in this realm or maybe even other dimensions and stuff i mean like what's the benefit of all doing all that yeah uh look and the, the grounding thing is interesting because um you know personally i i've, I've never even smoked just because I, I was you know my parents used to smoke i was never interested so i've like I can't even drink black tea. <laughs> I'm really sensitive. Oh, well, coffee, forget that. And that that all started after I started, after I started going out of body. I just became hyper hyper sensitive. Like, um, and I and you know I missed coffee in the beginning because I still love the smell of it. But I just realized I just that wasn't my way. What what I realized with the grounding thing is, for me, as I said. Um, going out of body, I was going into realities that were more real than this. They felt there was more texture, more color, more sound. So I started to realize that, in fact, I'm I'm grounding into a greater reality. So I even feel that um, I'm feel more connected to this reality now than I did before because I don't take it so seriously on a certain level. What I mean by that is. I see it as a game of energy. I don't ground into um, kind of the cynical reality we're fed. You know, this this reality that we're somehow, uh, you know, a good person is sort of stooped doing a job that is somehow serving society in a way that you don't really understand and you're sacrificing yourself for the good of all. You know, that kind of, yeah. kind of what I call rubbish, really. I don't think that really serves anyone. So I'm not, you're right, I'm not grounding into that reality. I'm grounding into a reality that has probably have more to do with um, nature. It's very, very important for me and uh, people and uh, real things. Um, the stuff um, that we're made of, you know, the, the cosmos, sure. <laughs> to me, to me yeah. you know, that, that is real. And if it, if it makes one slightly disconnected from the warped reality that is, um, streamed to us from the mainstream, you know, and I don't mean that in a nasty way. I, I think the mainstream is a wonderful teacher. It is the illusion. It's a wonderful teacher. It teaches us what is not. And, and I really don't mean that to be a cynical and negative sense. I mean to be cynical in the, in the sense that cyn actually the cynic society began through people who wish to see the truth. That's what it means, the truth. Yeah. So I'm actually, it, it is changing your perception of grounding change it into and being utterly authentic and also just kind of broadens your awareness right of of the nature of reality and of who you are as like a multi-dimensional being <laughs> you right? said it absolutely that's exactly right so i mean i'm 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 constantly walking through this reality like a question mark you know and i find that i'm constantly in, in the most playful sense thinking well what is actually going on here and i find that each day i'm preparing for for night when things can happen when i when i lose that logical mind and move into the illogical realms where we're not defined by gravity and everything we've been taught so so yeah carrying that notion of what actually are we what 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 and i feel that there's something amazing going on you know because i once had um this amazing astral experience while i was fully awake and uh, the vibrations came as probably those of your listeners who've had experiences in yourself often the vibrations come and sure. and and these vibrations were amped up because i was awake and like they were really 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 loud really buzzing and it actually lifted my body and like to it to experience um levitation which i did in this realm and i wasn't looking for right, that. right. was that uh, the one with your with your yeah. injured leg yeah, was that right, the one that's right yeah exactly. Yeah, talk about that then. <laughs> like, kind of give us the details of what happened. That was amazing because I, w I remember at the time, often through my astral experiences, you know, as you know yourself, you'd, you'd explore, like you'd come out of an astral experience and it would sort of 
there'd be you'd be exploring something in life think well that was an amazing experience and i remember coming out of an astral experience knowing that somehow we had these um templates that were that it were all times healthy i knew that we were almost like that being unwell if you like was just a state of mind that we're more than mind you know it was it was like the feeling that there there exists in the ether in the astral this template of perfect health so i was toying with that theme when i had a surf accident um that i knew was coming and and you know but i'll i'll, I'll jump to, to the actual uh, thing of it and i i'd injured many quite badly on this on this on this wave and and i'd, I'd been strapped up put onto crutches and remember the doctor um it was the feeling that i would have to have an operation after maybe six weeks or something and or 10 weeks, I forget what it was exactly, but I remember, you know, something had snapped, And but I remember lying in the tent thinking, look, I'm not gonna go home, you know, I'm with friends, they can, I can, I can watch them surf and stuff, I'm, I'm okay to um, stay here, but I remember I was really into mantras at that stage, I, mean, I was carrying this mantra and it, and it just felt right, and, and a lot of the astral stuff, you know, you can't force, I've tried, it's gotta sit right with you, I remember this mantra at this particular time because I was playing with this template of perfection you know this notion of the, the mantra was um i deny the illusion of my injured knee and i give thanks for my perfect health and i just knew this mantra felt right it sat with me at that time um i knew that my knee wasn't injured and i remember so what i do is and i often use mantras to go astral so i just keep on repeating it, repeating the mantra so my my perspective is that if you can carry um, an intention into the realms into the illogical realms or beyond the veil of sleep if you can carry enough of an intention into the realms of greater reality then miraculous things can happen and what i mean by that is greater reality is that because it seems to be beyond team thing time things often happen straight away or they're not they're not questioned by um doubt of oh that that's impossible you know this it's you're beyond that so i kept saying this this mantra um whenever i'd wake i just keep saying it and and i was lying on my back i remember it was very uncomfortable i remember i woke up a few times nothing had happened I'd, I'd, i thought maybe i'd have an astral experience nothing happened then it, it had gone to light it was already light that someone was seeing the tent and you know and and some people said but you know were you asleep well i know i was awake because i was awake and i never transitioned from the so i remember i i caterpillared on in my stomach and i thought okay well it's all over it's not going to happen oh well but i've got to change position because i'm really uh, hurting and i started to feel the vibrations i remember thinking well this is impossible because i'm awake why are there vibrations but they got really loud it was like a war war but really loud and i was i was just thinking what on earth is going on and um and then i started to hear my voice and it's it was my voice was saying the lord's prayer and um it was funny because I'd been raised a Catholic to the age of, say, 10, but not really practicing since then. Um, couldn't have recited the Lord's Prayer at that, you know, I've since researched it. Plus, I heard my own voice saying it many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and I thought, this is interesting. Here's my here's my, high, my own voice again, so speaking like through a resonator. It seemed to come through the top of my head. And every time it got to the words, uh, so these vibrations are happening, I'm awake, aghast my eyes are open i'm lying on my, my stomach on this air mattress thinking what is going on i'm hearing my own voice and i'm literally looking around the tank on what's going on and every time it gets on earth as it is in heaven it keeps repeating those two lines while still saying the lord's prayer so i'm hearing two of my voice one saying the whole lord's prayer and the other one i'm just repeating on earth as in heaven on earth as in heaven on earth. and i'm thinking this is interesting then my body uh, lifts up so these vibrations are very strong all around my body my body lifts off the air mattress with my eyes open i'm going whoa and because, <laughs> I, because i'm not asleep you know like when you take an astral from a sleep state it's a different thing it's like you're already in a stage a halfway house if you like when you're asleep you know your body's totally relaxed it's just different but here i'm lifted up and then I'm, I'm i'm lifted right off the mattress and put back down very gently and while this is going on all these fingertips are working at my left knee at a million miles an hour and there's also hands around my ankles holding my ankles 
And I am absolutely petrified because <laughs> I, I, I've had so many experiences, but but here I'm I'm freaking out. I'm just thinking this is good. However, no, and I just I'm just screaming. I'm <laughs> screaming. My wife next to me. She wakes up going, "What's going on?" And then, um, of course, the screaming and everything, and the, the vibrations and everything starts to subside, and the voice goes away. But there was no, you know, I was I was awake. I was lifted off the bed. There was no, um, and it was. Um, you know, and as it was after 10 days, um, I remember I was pushing the mower along, you know, with thinking that I, you know, going from crutches to a lawnmower. <laughs> but then I realized, <laughs> hey, I can walk. And and then uh, there was no, you know, I had a, a total healing. I remember the doctor saying, well, that's unbelievable. You, you do not need an operation. So I remember thinking something miraculous happened. And, and that was, it was a definite, ast- what I call an astral experience during a waking state. And to me, like, you know, think of reality, like, as you said before, what what are the levels of reality we're in, and and what is the reality we we have the potential to live in? You know? Right, right. So what you're saying with that with your story is that if your wife was awake right next to you, she would have literally have seen you float up off of your bed, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because typically, right when we go astral, it's like you just look like you're just taking a nap or something. But so that that's a trip, dude. So I mean, you were awake in that one. But typically, before we go out of body, like we sense these certain vibrations, not all the time, but sometimes some people do. And so mm. can you describe just some of the common sensations that you feel, you know, like as a prelude, you know, before going out of body? Yeah. And really, I'd have to say like probably the, 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 the things that I felt because I don't now it's 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 smoother transition. When I go astral, I often don't even feel it. Like I'm, I'm asleep, and all of a sudden, I'm there. So yeah, same here. Yeah, yeah. That, and I think that's natural. If you think of it like a car with loose parts, and eventually the parts kind of get tight, or for whatever reason they get cut tight. What, what I think is, well, how I used to feel is like I'd feel, um, as I said, often there were lights, but often the vibrations would come, and and the vibrations would wake me. So it's the feeling of this is what like people can do um, is to almost preempt, like imagine, I think listening is is a sense that is a really, really tapped into the astral sense. If you were to, I think the astral sense is like a unified sense, but if there's a sense you want to develop, and it's funny because I was a musician, so I was often dealing with listening, if you think about it. So um, to, to imagine listening around yourself, and and I think what would happen is these vibrations would come and would, would wake me up. So it's the feeling of, oh, vibrations are there, and all of a sudden, my mind would become very lucid, knowing that my body was asleep. So I'd know, I would know I'm in bed, body's asleep, but my mind is, boom, wide awake. And that was like when the first experience, when the light came through my forehead, bang, it just woke me. So, and I think once it's been done with someone, that's a certain, that is an awakening of sorts. And I think that's easier then to kind of bring that on. So, but the sensations were, were quite full on. Often vibrations around the heart area is the feeling of the heart going, boom, 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 and it is the heart chakra that seems to be connected to the astral body as in you know the, the, even theoretically they say the astral body is the fourth body of the human energy system as the heart is the fourth chakra but when i talk about the astral i kind of talk about it loosely like i think we can move as you said before we can move through this uh the real-time dimension into other dimensions so we're not just having to hang around what they call the fourth dimension um where a lot of the archetypes uh, are scaring people or billing people, all this kind of stuff, but you can move to higher levels. So when we when we say the astral body, I think we're loosely referring to that body that is able to be that that aspect of yourself that is able to be conscious, you know. In yeah. uh, so um, well, before we get into that though, like you were mentioning vibrations earlier, we even mm. talked about like your first experience. You were feeling something in your forehead, mm. and then you felt like a. Did you say you felt a wind? Yeah, wind yeah. Come by? Wind in oh, the ears. Okay. So when when you mention these vibrations, like, are you being? Does it feel like you're getting electrocuted, and does it hurt? And like, what would what can you do? What can a person do if they start to feel that, just so they don't freak out? Yeah. Um, look. So in the very beginning, because because this light came in, it felt like a, a ball of light coming in my forehead, and also came into my heart, making my heart feel great, and then it was a feeling of inviting me out. So I think. Then when the vibrations came, I recognized a similar signature. So for me, I didn't freak out. Like I, I can understand people uh, who are trying astral travel who have never done it because f- for me, I'd never heard of astral travel. So uh, it was a baptism 
of fire in the best sense in many ways because I, I knew not to be afraid of it because I, I recognize it to be a beautiful thing. Um, so I, when the vibrations come, I think, so a lot of my preparation if I want to go astral is um, to really relax the body. And a lot of the meditation I used to do, I still do, is really relaxing the body very, very much. That's probably the keystone of of what I think for the astral experience is to be so relaxed so that when the vibrations do come, you don't um, reflex of grabbing onto your body. So it's a sort of let go of your body. And I guess that comes with a certain degree of trust and, and faith. And um, my um, interpretation is that the vibrations are actual beings in themselves and, and that you're guided out of your body. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, we'll probably get into that later. Um, I mean, you were mentioning earlier about how, like, so you can come out of your body and be, as you said, like in real time, like the physical 3D reality here. So what would you say is the difference between the astral realms and this physical reality here? Well, I think when you when you really this physical, in real time, often you will see astral characters. So, um like I will see people's astral bodies. Or the, I remember the first time getting out. I, I'd been in a. I was staying in a hotel uh, in Europe, and um, I, I didn't even know I'd gotten out of my body. I, I, I'd, I'd heard because I used to go out into other high realities. I didn't high vibrational realities. I didn't know that you could be a ghost. You know, you could get out and, and walk around. And so I was fascinated. And then, and then of course, when I thought of that, then it, of course it happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I remember, I, you know, I got up to go to the bathroom in the night in this hotel, and I thought something was different. I turned around and saw my body in bed, and that, that freaked me out at the beginning. Um, and I knew to stay away from my physical body, otherwise you get sort of sucked back in. It was interesting. But I remember seeing these people walking through the hotel, and a lot of the first early experiences were very verification for me. Like I'd see people walk through, and and I'd even walk through rooms, and I and I the next morning I could verify them at breakfast. And I remember that very first experience in, in real time, and... I was shown a building when I was flying to the city and then I saw the building a week later in the newspaper because it had just been built. And it was kind of, for me, early on, those experiences, as I said, I've come, I'm I'm um, kind of a natural born cynic in that I, I, I'll only truly believe something if, if I know it, if I experience it. And I think everyone, I think that's how we're wired, um, you know, and so... Um, so in this reality, when I, when I go around, like in real time, I used to sort of, there, often there'll be slight little anomalies, like little things would be slightly different. Um, you know, like pictures um, or objects or the placement of things. It's, it's fascinating. Um, but more, I, I was interested in what was going on when people were sleeping. So I was often watching them when they were sleeping to see how their bodies would come out. And, you know, in the beginning, I had no idea what was going on in the beginning. I would offer, I'd boo people. I'd actually boo people I'd scare them <laughs> to see if I get a reaction or I'd, I'd stand in the street and allow people to walk through me. And I would sense their emotional state. I sensed their entire story in a split second and, and made me think of what is this time thing. And I could even, I could even get a reaction, a slight hesitation out of people in the physical. And I thought, wow, this is fascinating. And then um, you know what? 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 What are the rules here? Right. <laughs> you know? Oh, it's pretty interesting stuff. And then when you go into other realms, of course, it's different because you, it's you know, you be on bizarre planets or just strange things would go on, or meet interesting people, and they'd often talk telepathically, and I'd have no idea what they're saying, but I'd have an understanding of what was said. But and all, all words would come out of my head. I'd never speak through my mouth, and it would be absolute in absolute clarity, like. It's like you could lie out there. I love that. You, you, and that's what I mean about being authentic. It, it, f from going astral, I kind of discovered a kind of a truer self that, that I didn't even know I was, you know? Um, yeah. No, that's cool. I mean, so as you were saying, there are other, you know, out-of-body experiences you, you can have where you're just like in these really weird, bizarre places, other planets. I mean, it sounds like, sounds like sci-fi, you know? So, so like to a skeptic, they'll be like, come on, you know, like, please, you know, so it can yeah. sound like we're just dreaming or whatever. But then yeah. you were mentioning that, that whole incident when you were at that hotel in yeah, Italy, yeah. and then you were able to kind of verify the people that you saw and the tower and the yeah. newspaper. And so that, I, I find those very powerful, you know, in conversations with people who 
are not into this stuff, you know, because then you, you know, you could kind of just verify and be like, well, I saw this. And how did you know that? I just find those very fascinating. But at the same time, of course, having those other kind of out of worldly, you know, other worldly experiences are really fun. But it's like, when you when you speak to a skeptic, that's not something that's that would make a lot of sense to them, you know, they just think we're dreaming or something. Yeah. So how would you differentiate like a dream or even a lucid dream from astral projection or are they the same in your opinion they're very different i think their fingers on the same hand for sure i think because i have a lot of lucid dreams what i found is um in dreams when you're lucid and you know i've often really explored them and felt the um surfaces of things and, and i thought well this is pretty good this is pretty, <laughs> this is pretty real but i find that uh, they tend to fracture easily it's a, it's a question of mind. It's a question of how your mind is operating. So in a, in a dream, even a lucid dream, you can lose yourself to the dream often. Also in a lucid dream, you can create things from nothing. Like you can create an ice cream, um, which you can also do in, in the astral. You don't have to know the recipe, whereas in the 3D, you have to work out how to get that ice cream. So that's where there's similarities. Um, I use lucid dreams to as portals sure to the astral but they are very different lucid dreams are um, not as um kind of then the composition is not as is not as robust like so like in the let's say in 3d we call this reasonably robust i would call this what what is in front of you now what people are looking at right now i would call that reasonably robust uh, um, when you're in the astral it's far more robust you can see the textures Without having to walk up to the wall, I can, I can, my mind's eye can be a centimeter away from the wall, even though the wall is two meters away. Or I can see behind myself in absolute detail. I can see every corner of the room in detail. I can, uh, the intention of objects, of thing, of, of beings, is very clear. Whereas in this reality, it's more conjecture of that person over there, what they're thinking. Um, the, it's, it's much more. I call that very robust, right? It's very, it's very. Um, the information around you is 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 highly tangible in the astral. In the dream state, not so, not so, not so at all. Not as not as robust as, as 3D. Okay, and would you call like uh, the astral dimensions? I guess you could say like a consensus reality. Would you say that? Yeah. Okay. So, like, if you wanted to visit your friend or meet someone in the astral, it, it's you could say that it's also like an objective place. Yeah. Look, I think. It's, it's, um, I've found that a lot of the, there's a lot of archetypes out there, like, you know, we have all the fairy tales, um, like a lot of people have certain monsters, they come out, you know, the succubi and all these sort of things. And, and, and I found these to be the case. Um, and I've, what I've realized is that the, the human drama is interesting. We've kind of set up, um, we've set up these myths and things almost to, we're kind of enslaving ourselves or almost to lock us in. Uh, people get out of body and get a shock. You know, they see something and it's all oh, so scary. Or we have uh, movies on aliens. And I'm not into sci-fi and I don't watch movies on aliens because I find that a lot of them, they seem to be very negative. And, and having met aliens in the astral, which, as you said before, I, if someone were to come up and say that to me, I wouldn't have believed it. I wouldn't have believed it. I would have just thought, oh, yeah, you, whatever. What are you on? <laughs> uh, I would, I would, to be honest. But, for me now, it's 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 even not about proving things to people. It's me. It's about the experience of exploration and right, what is there. Right. Um, but it is interesting, as you say, the first experiences I had were very much verification ones, just by their nature. And I think that, but I think um, these realities you go to, I found that astral travelers often do go to similar kind of realities. I find that I've seen some things um, that I have no idea what they are, like structures in kind of space that are very alien to our story and very very interesting intelligences that are very difficult to comprehend without think it's i'm just so interested and um you know and then you hear a lot of people talk about how is this just a holographic reality and more and more i feel that, that it, you know it is like a, a simulation of kinds and and these uh when you get into the higher astral realms or, or realms that are more um cognizant or your mind is very clear that that's how i measure it like if I'm in the astral, if I'm meditating on a planet in the astral, first of all, I'll go to that planet and then I'll be moved to meditate. And I've since found 
other travelers have gone to the similar planet, this small planet that has rocks on it with a big red moon and the right. And other, nice. other people have said to me while well, I've been there, and I also was meditating. And when you meditate on that planet, you I remember first meditating there having this tremendous sense of not only well-being, but this tremendous sense of that there was nothing I had to strive for, that I was a perfect being. There's nothing, there's nothing outside of me that I don't have. It's all there. It's all there. And it was... It was more than just a theory. And even when you bring it back into the 3D and, and speak it, it sounds a little lame. It sounds a bit watered down. But there, because my mind is so lucid, so I measure dimensional reality, if you like, or level of, by the lucidity of the mind, by the clarity. Because what I feel is, in this 3D reality, which is a linear, linear, linear reality, um, we tend to be forever trying to grab, in, grab onto the present moment because it's – it often slips into the past. <laughs> right, right. Um, so we're often we're grabbing, 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 grabbing the whole time. Whereas when you're out there, it's boom. Your mind is so sharp. It's 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 like a pinprick of light. It's just so focused, and therefore, what you wish to come into being comes into being. You know, it's very clear. Like even what you don't even know what you are, the question you might have. I'll go into the astral as neutral as possible, and then a very clear. Uh, kind of question emerges from me and then I'm often shown that um, It's fascinating. I mean it, it's like so so for instance when you meditate in, in the 3d we, And we often talk about mindfulness and being present and all that sort of stuff And I can see why people talk about that because when you're in the astral and you choose to meditate It is so full-on it is so incredible um, we're kind of kind of chasing that state in the 3d when we do meditate and I've, I have the feeling that because these other realms in my view exist before the 3d so we are like often my higher self is talking to me uh, in the astral and he seems to know more than i know uh, <laughs> so yeah. i'm feeling that he's kind of pulling me to the surface um, of my consciousness and just like that we pull our dream figures to the surface of their consciousness so i think more and more we are kind of here to wake up. And I don't see that as uh, as kind of copping out of this reality. I think that's the reason we're here. That's why we're here, to, to actually uh, become, you know, more to wake up to what, to what we really are. And it, it's good fun. For sure. Uh, that's cool. I mean, so earlier you were even talking about, and you even mentioned in your book that during these explorations, you, you sense that you were being aided by other entities. You know, can you elaborate on that? Like, what what do you mean? Yeah, yeah. it's absolutely absolutely amazing. I remember that. I remember the first time thinking, you know, I'm flying along, thinking, okay, this is pretty cool. I can feel the wind, you know, forward. I'm going really fast. I, I used to try to stay low to whatever reality I was in, so I could see the surface, because otherwise you're just going to some bizarre reality. And um, I remember thinking, hang on, and feeling something around my ankles the first time, and I turned my head. And there was like um, a faceted being, like, you know, like those um, crystals, like a crystal cup. Well, you know, like a diamond is faceted. It was like a translucent uh, human, but but human as in uh, head, uh, body, arms, legs. And it was holding me, flying me. And I remember turning around, and I and I, did, I couldn't see any features. Of it. I could just see this it's translucent kind of like an outline, being. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I thought, whoa. <laughs> and I remember it spoke to me once again. It was like a, it was electronic. It was like a, through a some kind of um, resonance machine, and it sort of spoke in you know, like a really white language. And they weren't words I understood, but I know in in my mind I understood. I couldn't, you know, it was like a language that was clearly alien. And um, but I knew, and he was saying to me, or he or she was saying, you don't need to know this. Don't obsess, because in the bit for me. I, and I think that's probably made it easy for me to go astral. I wasn't looking for any kind of spiritual uh, answers. I was just fascinated with the mechanics. Like, what? There's something holding my, so even though I wasn't meant to know this, of course, I, I was thinking to myself, well, I was meant to know it. Otherwise, I would have turned around. So what gave me the, the inkling to turn and look. I think, and often that I'm told not to obsess in the astral with certain things. Like I remember the first time I went into what is known as the void. I'd never heard of the void. I'm, 
I would go into this like waiting room before I'm shown something, and then I would hear, I, I remember hearing the OM for the first time. It was like a, a really low AUM. It was definitely an OM, AUM. Very, very low, like, you know, octaves and octaves low. But it was like a male voice that was profoundly low, profoundly low. And it was, I remember just sitting there, hovering, taking in this OM, and then, and I didn't, I didn't Google the word OM for, for, for years later. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't go, and it made sense then because I just thought, well, you know, at the time I thought, I don't care. I'm just interested in being here, and that was cool. You know, it was literally a feeling of, wow, that was amazing. Um, it wasn't like, oh, yes, I'm here to discover the, uh, you know, it wasn't nothing and none of that kind of stuff. It wasn't, for me, I, I very much um, loved the feeling of going out to and it was so. You know, and that's where it changed my career was that when I go back and do music, I remember thinking, but that was so real. And I just think, and I wasn't really t talking about it to people, you know, uh, but I just thought those states are incredible. But I didn't feel the need to chase them with drugs. And not that not that I'm poo-pooing that. I understand that people are, are, are wanting to experience things, that that's their story. But I just felt that this is inherent within us. You know, I, I want to know more. what was that? What was that? You know, <laughs> the, what is that? Right. You know? So what, even when you were having these experiences, you were still a teacher, right? Yeah, I was doing teaching of music and playing music. And, oh, and, okay. kind of... and you were believing that your experiences were real and not just some like dream. Oh, no. You actually believed uh, it. Okay. Yeah. I knew because I, I, I felt it, it felt more real than this. That, that was the stumbling block for me. I couldn't let them go because they felt hyper real and you know it, it kind of changed me and as i said in, in, the, in this real in this um in my work state i just found myself becoming very uh, kind of non-reactive because i i found that if i was non-reactive i had more chance of going astral like so if, if i'm astral and seeing some bizarre scene i would stay there longer if i was not reactive and that had a knock effect that i that i'd find i'd be through having an astral experience, I'd be less reactive in this reality, in the 3D, because I would inherently see it as less real. And then that would help me get into the astral, and that, and that would help me in this reality. So I found I started to really experiment with energies, and um, it got to a point of a few years ago when I was meditating, I had this weird tweak in the back of my brain, back left. And I said to my wife, I said, well, something weird has happened. I remember I had to still go to work with music, and I had to rehearse everyone's name like I couldn't remember the people the names of people in my family I couldn't remember I couldn't put one sentence together it was really weird what happened was and I remember someone saying because I was troubled I thought well this is odd have I had a mini stroke but then someone I knew who knew about my experiences said look that's a trade-off you've been going out of body so much this is a trade-off and I thought to myself that is a good point because the narrator had been shut down so it was like I had radio silence in my mind. And that kind of pushed me away from music. I remember, you know, and, and eventually I got, you know, I, I got the words back. And I remember that that pushed me to write my book about astral travel. That was that was the impetus. I thought, well, I'll write a book because that will force me to get from the beginning of the sentence to the end. Otherwise, that, and, and writing the book about astral travel was my outing. So it's almost like the future knew, the future Greg yeah. <laughs> knew that. I needed some really weird thing to happen to push me into outing outing myself on astral travel, you know? And that is a weird way of doing it. I mean, yeah. I would think of putting a tweak in the back of someone's head. Yeah. And I couldn't, and I was a joker, you know, I was a funny guy. I couldn't, people thought, what's wrong with Greg? He, and I see, I couldn't get into a conversation because I couldn't think of the word by the time the conversation had moved on. It was that bad. Do you think that would be like a potential like a possible fear for people to have like that's why they probably wouldn't want to try this you know thinking like oh no I, I, what if my memory goes bad you know i don't think so because it felt so good what i mean by that is this beautiful neutral zone in my mind so it was much easier to get into a meditative state and like each day i'll get into that neutral zone <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful state it's in the beginning i was a bit worried about that but then um over time i found that um kind of you know what I say is different. I guess I have a different way of talking, if you like. Um, and as I said, it, it, it chopped the narrator out of the story, so that that the voice in the back of the mind 
um, you know, that might be clouding your judgment, um, just evaporated. So definitely a positive thing. Um, but, but, but kind of changing my, once again, my um, footing in this reality, like, you know, it kind of, it's less real, but once again, I'm, I feel grounding into a reality that is just, just different. Yeah. And as you were mentioning before, it's like you, you are being guided throughout this process, even during the times when you're not sure what's going on, but there's yeah. some sort of purpose, I guess you could say, overall, yep. you know, if things kind of come in together. And so you were mentioning earlier about you, how you saw that invisible being, I guess you could say, that was holding your feet while you were flying. I mean, because you're not alone. So, I mean, can you talk about that time when you ended up in like a medieval inn and then you encountered two people? And so who, who were those people? That was so cool because I remember. I remember at the time was pretty early on thinking, "What is going on?" Yeah. <laughs> <One of these. laughs> I, Watching I mean, too much Game you know, of Thrones, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. And I don't even watch that stuff. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> this is the funny thing. I don't even know. You know, people say, "Do you watch Game of Thrones?" No. Nah. <laughs> so, <laughs> the funny thing is, uh, yeah, I remember. I remember. You know, when I look at my mind, what, what was actually going through? I remember thinking, you know, I want some answers here. I kind of, and this is what I tell people: I want to experience astral projection. I, you know, in a playful way to kind of have a sense of, hey, what's going on here? You know, um, I guess it's a, this notion of being a sovereign entity and thinking, you know, don't don't just show me little glimpses of these things and not give me more answers. And that was bizarre. I went, so I go out of body and I feel the vibrations come and then I materialize in this kind of medieval inn. It's like, you know, medieval pub kind of thing, all stone and wood. And there's this man, this woman sitting there just looking at me. And I'm thinking, okay, this is pretty weird. And they look kind of human, and um, they start to tell me all about myself. And I remember just going, okay, this is too real. I go back, and I think, wake up, and I'm back in my bed, you know. And then, But then as soon as I close my eyes, I'm pulled back again. And I remember they were telling me that they were my guides. Now, this was before I'd heard of that notion, that new age notion of, of guides. So, you know... It, if I were to have read a book about that we have guides before that had happened, I would have said that's crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just I would. Yeah, now I'm more open. I, I don't think anything. You know, I mean, I, what I mean is, I'm, I'm, I don't really have an opinion on anything unless I've experienced it. So, so anyway, they were telling me about a lot about myself, and I said, where am I? I remember they said, oh, we're in Gwyneth, and I said, like, you know, Gwyneth Paul so <laughs> yeah. like, and they would laugh and all this kind of stuff. And then. I remember it's funny because later on I, I researched this notion of Gwyneth and it was pronounced it's spelled Gwyn Gwyned E double D but pronounced Gwyneth and it was a Welsh uh, medieval place of some kind of spiritual significance. That's what I researched. So it looks like Gw Gwyneth, right? A uh, Gwyned, but it's, it was pronounced in Welsh. It was pronounced Gwyneth, which I didn't. And so um, and then I and then I once again you know I go back to my body thinking well this is too real what's going on here so even though I wanted like early on, even though I wanted you know more evidence or whatever, I still was freaking out by the reality of it. You know, I still would pull, push back to my body. So there's obviously resistance. But then as soon as I close my body, uh, my eyes once again whoosh, back. And this time, I remember the last time I'm in a field with this with the woman. There was a woman and a man, and she has aged in Earth years. They've aged in Earth years, so they are ex-humans who are here. yeah, they're here and they're sort of inhabiting these realms around and they're guiding me through through certain processes and then she's showing me it was amazing i was in this field and it was just so beautiful and once again the mechanics you know you are uh, analyzing like the sunset and like i could see every blade of grass moving in slow motion it wasn't like just looking at them i could sense them all and it was like so beautiful and so so real and so while she's telling me all this stuff, I'm just thinking, yeah, this is amazing, you know. Not in a trippy sense, in, in a reality sense. I thought, like, it's like my heart is touching the scene. I had a feeling of, I'd really analyzed my my mindset in these states. And it was a feeling of um, my heart was my greatest sense, if you like. It was like the heart unifies all the five senses into a greater sense. And you're sort of touching, tasting, hearing everything through the heart and it makes sense i guess if the astral body is projected through the heart chakra which it does the vibrations do seem so anyone wanting to project uh, you know to to 
you do lots of chakra exercises, but you know, to really sense into your heart, you think in, in human terms what that entails with empathy and all that kind of stuff. So it just naturally hand in hand. But anyway, in this scene, um, she's showing me about auras that I've never really heard about the chakra system. And she's, I can see her aura around her very clearly, and she's telling me about energy systems. And that was what, you know, soon after that, I, I got into Reiki before I told anyone about my astral experiences. I did get into energy healing because I was just pulled in that direction. But I remember she was like, here was this hyper real thing. She's showing me the stuff. And I, I just made some, you know, pathetic insult to her because I just thought, well, what's going on? I thought this is, you know, what are the boundaries here? I remember she just smiled. She just shook it off and just looked at me, looked me in the eyes and said, Greg, we've been watching you for some time. Why are you so sad? And I remember coming back to wakefulness with this energy sort of coming through my body thinking, why am I so sad? sad? What the hell? And then I realized, okay, this is a guide experience. It's also a spiritual experience. This is what people – I realized the penny dropped on the notion of what what people term as a spiritual experience where you have um, aspects of, you know, higher reality or higher realized energies assisting you in growth. Because that's what it was, and 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 that precipitated a lot. Like I, I look, you know, it somehow sent a reverberation within me that wouldn't stop. Like, I, why am I so sad? Am I sad? Am I sad? I didn't know I said. And kind of like, you know, just the human condition. I remember then being shown past lives, not long after that, and realizing that okay, I'm more than I thought I was. A lot of my fears aren't my own fears, um, and it just seemed to evaporate a lot of stuff that I didn't even realize I was stressed about. You know, I just felt, I actually felt through it all in those early stages, I felt I belonged to something greater. I felt I was more than just this, you know, I felt I was more than just an insignificant little sort of being wandering around the earth, you know, which I felt, you know, and I, I guess a lot of people um, come to that in different ways, but this was a very direct way. Um, and really beautiful, you know, and, and yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that's just a beautiful truth, even thinking that you're not alone, that, that you know, I mean, it could sound like creepy to some people, yeah. but just to know that these beings, they've been watching yeah. you, they've been with you, you know, they've been guiding you, yeah. you know, in certain times yeah. in your life. So, I mean, that that's a very powerful, you know, truth for people who do feel alone, you know, to understand this reality yeah. that even though they yeah, may not yeah. see them, you know. It's so, so true. And I just think um, even though you might not see them, but, you know, and, and, you know, but you want to see them. If you're ready to see them, you will, you yeah. know, and and it is, it makes it very sort of concrete in the best sense. You know, I sort of then felt more um, trusting of, you know, but sometimes I've aborted trips. I've been, you know, didn't want to go out or, you know, was in some weird space capsule and hearing some weird language coming through. I just thought I don't feel like meeting some ETs today. You know, I and <laughs> often I just think, well, no, I don't want to go, you know, um, and that's all right. Yeah. you know um with, with people and i think um this you, you know and you cultivate these connections in the astral like so i would cultivate um and call in guides my guides to to help me experience something you know if i want to because you know it's nice to have a, a, you know a holding hand it's nice to have a helping hand um yeah and i think more and more um as an individual on the planet yeah, I do sense my energies are not individual. You know, I do sense uh, more and more a collective, not only with other people, but within my field as well. And, and that is a very, very, very comforting thing. Yeah, that is. Cool. I mean, and just a while ago, you were mentioning how you got into Reiki, and that was like an interesting journey yeah. of how you got into that. So do you mind talking about that one interesting experience you also had when you saw a therapist? Yeah, yeah. And That's I, a and cool really story. Not, <laughs> it is a cool story, and I think that um, many people wanting to sort of get into uh, this whole astral thing, often going to an energy therapist can really help. And I, I, I just, you know, I just fell into this one. I, I'd had a sore shoulder, you know, sore physical shoulder, and um, been nagging me. And um, someone said, Let go to this craniosacral when I was living in Vienna at the time in Austria. And um, I said, okay, I went along, and, and she was moving my arm around a bit, and uh, very gently, and then it went. And I remember thinking, well, this is interesting. I knew this woman was a bit different. And I said, well, what happened? And she said, well, you you had an energy block in your shoulder. And I thought, well, you know, once again, the inner skeptic, I thought, well, that that's rubbish. 
Mm. <laughs> don't just say, I'm going, yeah. what do you what do you mean by that? And she said, you you know, you had a block and I got rid of the block. I said, well, how did you get rid of it? She said, I just moved a few things and just sort of let it go. And I thought, well, I, I was kind of intrigued. I said, do I have more blocks? And she said, yeah, you're human. You'll have a few. <laughs> and, and, and I was just moved to go back. It was interesting. Um, and I remember the second, uh, it was actually, yeah, the second one I went back, I think it was, it was, she put her fingers into my jaw, uh, in, in, into my, into my actual mouth. And, um, I remember thinking, have you washed your hands? <laughs> and, uh, normal said, question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. And I realized, okay, then I sort of realized she's not the normal, she's an energy, she, she's an energy healer as well. I didn't know that at the time. And she said, look, you've had issues processing aggression. I thought, okay. That's interesting because as a little kid, you know, I've been physically abused a bit and maybe I, you know, did close down when I tried to speak out or something. I don't know. And she just said, look, you haven't really processed it right. So she put her fingers right in there. I remember that night, my jaw literally was burning. I could feel the stretching <laughs> within my jaw structure. And I, and I was freaking out. I thought, oh, my God, you know, I'm, I've got this burning teeth and jaw and gums. And, you know, what has happened? Next morning, I wake up. And there's a translucent black wolf in front of my face with green, these green eyes growling at me. And it's like literally, um, say, 10 centimeters away from my face. Face of a wolf. It's there for like, uh, you know, two nights or three nights, uh, two nights, three days. <laughs> um what I did you I feel? Going, were you afraid? I thought I was going mad. I remember being really upset. I remember my girlfriend saying, um, look, she just said do anything for me. I said, I, I can't function. I've got this wolf in front of me. I can't shake it off. Like, I look at someone and I have to look at them through the wolf. 24-7. 24-7. Oh, that's nuts. <laughs> and he was nuts and it was growling. And Now, this was interesting. I hadn't associated with what she said about the aggression. Now, a few days later, a couple of days later, I had this really good argument with a flatmate. And I remember different words came out rather than, and I realized, you know, oh, hang on. I, I, I was able to say my truth without kind of escaping or getting too angry, if you know what I mean, and losing myself or shutting down. And when I had this argument, the wolf licked me in the face and went to the corner and curled up. And I realized, okay, it's a friend. A few days later, get this, a woman approaches me, because I'm, I'm still I'm teaching a bit, a woman approaches me who is wearing the very wolf on a T-shirt. Wow. And my body goes into like a fit of energy. I'm going, whoa, 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 whoa. What is going on here? And I'm, I'm, I'm shaking. And I said to her, whoa, whoa, whoa. And, and she says, I, I said, you do. And she said, I'm a Reiki master. I said, what's Reiki? And, and I thought, okay, the wolf there, it was exactly the same wolf. I've Googled and Googled for many years that wolf and never found it. I never found that wolf. I don't know who created that wolf. It was this very same wolf. And that led me to Reiki. Now, that's pretty weird once again. I mean, what a weird... What a weird way to know, get into Reiki. <laughs> you know, if you wrote that in a story, that would just be lame. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen that wolf come back again? No. That's interesting. I'll remember it. I'll remember it if I see it. That's yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, if you saw it 24-7... Pretty sure it's etched in your brain, you know. <laughs> That's it's interesting. Brain, yeah. 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 Um, and, you know, speaking of reality, yeah, speaking yeah. of reality, um, all of my astral experiences has have etched themselves into a brain, into my brain in such a way, even I, even then I said into our brain, um, far more real. Sure. Yeah. Than, than these than these three D mortal memories. Yeah, far more real. I don't forget them. I can see it so clearly. Oh, I feel you. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, especially like when you talk about how it seems more real because, like you said, your sensations are heightened. There's like more colors, and you're able to see all these yeah. details, almost like yeah. slow motion. You know, it's like yeah, it's, it's trippy. <laughs> it know? is trippy. It is trippy. <laughs> so, it is, yeah. um, you know, in your book, there was one part that I found interesting when you talked about you being taken up on some sort of craft, and then you you ask these beings whatever you want to call them like a question like with a deep yearning and they had a very interesting answer when you when you ask them that question do you, can you share that story was that was that the time when um the galactic was, was, federation you saw those words that's right yeah and i never heard it's funny funny thing is because once again later on 
not until when I'd written my book, I, uh, people said, oh, oh, you're one of those, are you? I said, what, one of those collective federations? I said, what do you mean? Mm. And um, as I said, I'm not into science fiction. And But I, I, I then when I um, did some research, th- this whole Galactic Federation thing has a, has a big, uh, a lot of people talk about it. Now, so I was up, I remember going out, I was going away from the Earth um, and, and, and looking back at the Earth, and, and I felt very much that I was traveling kind of in this reality, like in this, what I call, uh, real time. And I found myself all of a sudden at the asteroid belt. I knew it was the asteroid belt. And I could see this these huge, you know, Big uh, rocks, <laughs> big rocks. But there are a lot of them, and and it was. A, and then I could see these. I was a, attracted to these little triangular craft that were up against the asteroid belt on our side of the asteroid belt. And I thought, well, that's interesting. They seem to be protecting us from the outside, if you like, not the other way around. I thought this is interesting. So once again, this notion of guidance, even as humanity, we have these, you know, other beings that are actually out there protecting us, and um. And then there was this huge craft that went by. I remember it was a big white ship um, and it had this stenciled writing, a little bit like uh, the military of today, but it was it was kind of hieroglyphs or lots of kind of semicircles and dots and, and, and straight lines, but kind of stenciled. And I knew the meaning of it was Galactic Federation. It was a massive white ship. I remember I got, you know, I was trying to be always non-reactive, but when I saw this, I just thought, whoa, you know, the reality of this big spaceship and all this. I remember coming back to my body. Now, once again, often the question is pulled out of you. And as I'm going back to my body, I felt this question come out of me that I hadn't consciously entertained. Um, And it was, why are you not known to us as a planetary collector? Like, why why, why aren't we... Why don't we know about this? And as I went back into my body, I heard a, a male voice come into my mind and it said, because you continue to kill your own. Mm. And I thought that's interesting. I thought, okay, that is interesting. That was a, a definite question answer thing, if you like, which you often get out there. Often you, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm often out there just going, wow, wow, about the mechanics of it. Or if I'm shown something so bizarre I'm just trying not to think that's too bizarre because then I'll, I'm just trying to take it in because often things go on. Like I remember I used to go uh, up these astral elevators that would appear at the end of my bed. You know what? And there'd be a, this would go on for a chapter. Like there, often things come in chapters. So at the end of my bed, I wake up in the astral and I go, okay, there's an elevator. I'll get in the elevator. And um, I go to this uh, group of people and they'd be sitting around a table. And this was night after night. And, and they'd look human. But they weren't. And I, I used to think they were quite cold hearted in the beginning. I'd look at them and think, well, you don't seem very nice. <laughs> well, then I'll think, you know, I don't know. I just thought there's something. But I realized after a while that they just didn't have, I could look, you could really look them in the eye. You know, there was no shields going up. There were no, there were no egos whatsoever. There was no characters. There was no um, personality, if you like. Well, that sounds negative, but they, they, they weren't playing at something. Um, there were no identities going on. These were just these beings who looked humans who weren't. And I realized um, th- then then they'd have turned to speaking around the table and they'd speak on levels that I had no idea. I remember it being downloaded into my brain, but I had absolutely zero idea of the concepts. It was, I really felt this, this stuff is um, advanced. I don't get it. And I remember getting slightly apprehensive because I was going out night after night, different people speaking, but it was the same people around the table came to my turn I thought this is interesting they all looked at me and I found that when these people when they when they looked at you all of a sudden involuntarily the information came out of my mind I said and it came out of the top of my head and I hear my words absolutely crystal clear and I was talking about um, the you know unequal distribution of resources on the planet and I went through this big spiel about the issues on earth in not not a political way but very and i'm not a political well i I wouldn't call myself a political person i don't i hadn't really thought on that like it was that was not my vocab yeah that wasn't the a discussion i would have with people but it was a very uh clear um kind of report on a situation on planet earth definitely right and i thought this is interesting because and then the nerves went because i realized i could just sit in the chair and 
everything that needed to be said was said. Yeah. Now, that, that is, it was a, such a curious feeling, almost like little pennies in my brain um, flying out my head. I, I, hard to describe. Little levers being pulled. And um, what I realized is I'd go back um, a lot to these people, and I really liked them. I realized you could, um, they just had no egos. Yeah. Would you say um, that this would be like, like, was there a familiarity to it to them? Oh, like, yeah. were this like your family or just friends? Oh, yeah, I felt really good. In fact, the last time I was there, I didn't want to come back. To be honest, <laughs> right, right. it was a long time ago, and I've, I've come to terms with being on planet Earth. But I remember I um, I I I, I could feel the having to leave, and I said no. Nah. And I remember grabbing onto the table. It was quite a scene, and I said, "I'm not going." And I remember one of them, the leader, said. It's okay. You'll be back soon. Yeah, it was. It was. It was really fun. No, that's right. Well, look, the whole time thing is different. You know, like like I would hear often. I'd deliberately um, open my eyes in this reality, and I would hear voices when they're speaking to me as well, and they'd speed up. And once again, that pinprick notion, that notion of time, not really existing out there. So, what I realize is, in a split second, um, this reality can be happening um, that we're having, which is sl slowed down. So, you know, everything, uh, I, I feel more and more it's kind of what, you know, and I'm not being fatalistic here, but I feel it is kind of like a block reality. I feel if you are, um, say you've got a telescope in front of you um, so sideways and you've got, you know, you're looking at it, you put it on the table, lay it out in front of you, and you've got the, on the left, you've got the past, the middle of the telescope is the present, uh, the, the right-hand side of the telescope is the future. Now, if you were to pull that telescope up and look at it from the end of the future or at the end of the past and then look straight down, then all of the all of the the times are in one kind of, you know, like one cross section, if you yeah. like. Yeah. So that's what I mean about surrendering. What I feel is, and, and having kind of gone into the future, and that sounds a weird thing to say. Um and then, you know, you can explore uh, aspects of the past as well. I feel that it's all happened, it's all happening, um, it's all gonna happen at the same time. <laughs> So it's it's kind of going along for the ride, as lame as that sounds. I really feel um, there's kind of nothing to reach for external. I feel that we're just um, kind of living it. Experiencing. Um, yeah, and, and you know, that can sound fatalistic because personally, um, while we can do certain things and enjoy certain things, it, it, it's all happened anyway. <laughs> so we like it's all in our favor. It's all rigged in our favor to wake up. Everything is, it's it's a perfect system. It feels so benign when you get through the the levels of fear out there. I remember once going out of the planet and um, this tremendous fear was around there, and um, and I knew that oh, and I started to recognize oh, that's not my fear. Um, there's a collective, you know, and that's often programmed, you know, uh, for certain reasons. And, um, but, you know, it's all written in our favor, and then you move beyond that, and then it's blissful again. So it's a kind of, um, and a lot of people are, you know, a lot of the programs that come from the illusion are to trigger emotional kind of capacitators in human to kind of, um, to, to, to kind of dig into that emotional state of fear. And it's kind of like a, it's an addiction, you know, like, Oh, is it terrible? Isn't that terrible? Isn't that terrible? Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? You know, you see the joy in people, you know, this, not really joy, but you see this look in people's eyes. They love it, you know? And um, and the and the illusion is very good at that. And I've seen in the astral that there are certain beings that actually gain nourishment from that kind of unconscious, complicit um, logging into the, the, the fear. And, um, you know, it's something we're all going to, through and and it's just a phase <laughs> phase we're in but a lot of the lower a lot of the lower dense realms of the astral kind of resonate with that and often boo us back in you know and often scare us yeah and that's what i wanted to ask you too because you just even mentioning that you know it's already kind of um giving me what your answer is of like these lower entities or lower astral realms because you know, I've, I've had conversations with people, there's even, you know, famous authors, you know, some of them even say that there's no such thing as those things, that it's all just light and love. You know, I mean, how would you respond to that? Well, well, 
I mean, it's ultimately, yeah, it's, it's light and love. Um, but in the realms that it is, there, there's no there's there's no there's no shadow like there's no evil um it doesn't exist but the play in duality is that of yin and yang is that of dualism is that of karma is that of good and bad is that of judgment non-judgment is that of you know uh, condition non-condition so in this reality we're taught very much the conditional state you think of it a child is from a parent is said, you know, and they mean well the parent, but they'll say, you know, you know, be a, you, oh, you've been a good boy, you've been a good girl, I, I will show you my love now. So that is, of course, programming that love is a conditional thing, um, which of course is rubbish. But because we have that going on in this realm, it shows itself. So often you'll have often the, the, these shadow beings. People say they see in the. You know, they wake up and they see a shadow being in the room. In fact, they're just seeing a being, but because they're scared or they've got level, right. trace levels of fear with them right. when they fall asleep. They, they just interpret they, they, it as evil. Yeah, exactly. That's what I found. And I've had tussles out there, you know, in the beginning. and and then, But it, it wasn't through um, intellectual release. I remember, you know, I had had this tremendous tussle with this entity. And once again, it was another chapter. I'd, get, I'd be getting out of body. I'd be in the void, this dark space, and there was this... She showed herself as a female character, but it was like she was horrendous. Like her face was that scary. And she had like hair that was streaming off literally like serpents. It was literally like that. And her face was crawling with maggots. And because it was in the astral, I could see everything close up at the same time. And her eyes were even crawling. And the stench was, you know, an astral stench is like a normal stench times a million. It was appalling. And she, and I remember she was chucking balls of energy at me. I remember the first time something hit my shoulder and I came out of it and I thought, whoa, well, my shoulder actually hurts. I thought, this, this is really weird. And once again, it was a bit like the wolf. I thought, okay, here we go. I'm either going mad, I need help, I shouldn't go, whatever. But I found that, nah, let's just go, let's see what's going on. And so night after night, I'd have this tussle and um, I couldn't, I, I learned to, to swirl balls of energy at her as well. And someone said, that sounds like Buffy the dragon slayer. And I said, <laughs> I don't watch Buffy. It's like Street so, Fighter, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. And I don't even, I'm not even into that. And, um, but what was happening was um, I was able to intercept her pain balls. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then it was really weird, you know. And then I'm, this went on for a while. And, and, and then I remember she said, she called me by name. This was after a few nights. She said, Greg, you're getting good at the whole defending thing. And like she was seriously scary face and pure evil. This is what, to me, she represented that, you know, feeling of just, oh, and the, the, the dread in the heart and this feeling of like, boom, you know, she was seriously scary. And I remember her face then, I thought the defending thing, what does she mean by that? Then she was right by mine again, her face. And, and I remember thinking, you know, if I, if I could astrally puke, I would. And um, then it wasn't intellectual, but I felt my heart release for some reason. I remember feeling my heart chuckle go, boom. And I felt this tremendous wave of empathy for her. I don't know why. And I remember her face um, transfigured into one of radiance. And she said, you said, and she said, you see, Greg, it's all the same. And I remember coming out of that with this tremendous sense of, of that the, there is no evil. I remember it was this tremendous realization that that it's all the same. It's just it's it's just perception. Um, yeah, it's just the light, the face of light seen through our own shadows, if you like. So it's all about clearing up, clearing up those shadows around us. Okay, I mean, so, I mean, you've had so many interesting and amazing, exciting experiences, you know, and just kind of like how you were mentioning in the, in the beginning of this interview, you were kind of talking about like, you felt like this was kind of guided. It's almost as if this is almost planned, you know, like from the beginning or something like that. I mean, oh, so yeah. do you think that everyone is able to do this, you know, to go out of body, or is this something that's only, you know, meant for like certain individuals? I think, I think everyone is going out of body. I think it's a question of, I, I would call astral projection or astral traveling, um, waking up to that sense, being conscious yet. So can everyone go out consciously? Look, this is a question in the beginning. I remember when I, when I as I said, I wrote the book and then I came back to Australia and, um, cause I, I wrote it, I was living overseas a few years ago and, um, and then people started, well, the funny thing was I'd seen it in the astral. I knew I would talk on the subject, and then I knew I would do workshops. But anyway, people said, can people 
be taught this? And I thought, I, I don't know. And so I started teaching it. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I realized, um, you know, there, there was, you know, a rate of probably, you know, say I had a group of 10 people, the two people that night would have an astral experience. And I thought, okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah, some some is going on, and then people would say, "Oh, thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg, for taking me out of body." And I go, "What?" And they say, "Yeah, you took my body." And I, I realized that's so in the astral we're doing stuff anyway, and I realized that's that's just one of you know one of my job one of my jobs if you like in the astral is to take people out. But um, even when I don't know, even when I don't have rec recollection, so I'm thinking, um, you know, I think when we talk about astral projection or, or like. For instance, like I've got uh, even an online course I've recently put up. A lot of that course, what I, what I talk about is a lot of it is, you know, working through the chakras, releasing fears, like looking into what is and what isn't, what what you are. So a lot of, I believe we all have the potential to. I think a lot of it. Some sometimes someone will come to me and say, Greg, I really want to go astral, and I'll look at them, and they're, they're clearly very fearful, and um, you know, and and I'm thinking, well, uh, we'll see, you know, and um. And so I think for someone who, you know, is uh, virgin or edging on psychotic, not recommendable. Sure, <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. You know, but for, but for the average person, I think, um, yeah, absolutely, to have a glimpse into this because, and I've seen people who have very, very easily um, had an experience and they just, for them, the one experience was enough and they've just, it's just transformed them. And I, I thought, wow, this is, okay, this is worth it. Like, they, otherwise I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily share it to teach anyway. And and I found that it's been such a positive experience for them. And um, like for me, when I started going out, I wasn't guided by people in this reality. I mean, everything I learned was through invisible people. So, But that was quite a trying time for me because I really didn't know what was going on. Um, and people would say, oh, that's bad. You shouldn't go out of body. You'll be body snatched or you know, <laughs> the devil will come and get you. Yeah. And, and it was, I thought, shit, what's going on here? But, and, but I knew it felt good. I knew it felt right, you know, for me. Um, so I think if, if people are moved to it, I think that people can. What I found is, like, here's an interesting one. Uh, not that long ago, I'm lying in bed. I thought I'd fallen asleep, but I hadn't. Or I no, no. I thought, yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe I. I don't know. Anyway, I look across. <laughs> as I said, now it sort of just merges. But and I saw this woman above my wife. My wife was asleep. I'm looking. I thought, oh, gee, I didn't realize that astral. And she saw me see her. And she escaped out the wall. And this isn't to sound, you know, sinister, but this is just, you know, what what is also going on. Now, it was interesting because my wife woke up and then I was fully awake and I said, what did you experience then? She said, I I was having a nightmare. And I said, what was your nightmare about? And she said, you know, nothing related, uh, nothing related sort of in concrete to the woman. But what I realized was this being was... Um, having some effect on my wife's dream right. state. Right. Now the fact is it's it is a very fluid reality, just as it, it just as in three D is very fluid. You know, we, we interact with people. We are also interacting our dream state now, our astral state with beings in these realms. Wouldn't you want to know what's going on? Wouldn't you want to wake up to that? Right. Right. You know, so so every night I, I see it as like a mini death. I'm preparing. Like I'm not going to cross the road without looking. Uh, when I go to sleep, I want to maximize my sleep. I want to have a great sleep. I want to um, have these lucid experiences, whether they're dream state or astral state. Oh, for me, that's part of waking up to what I am. So, and I see that the potential. I, 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 I can't imagine that that wouldn't be open for everyone to experience because it wouldn't want to know if if certain um, energies are you know interfering with you on a certain level I mean in the end as I said it's all rigged in our favor you know and and if we are carrying certain subconscious fears it just resonates into the lower astral and then you know so so how I see it is that you want to feel as great as you can when you fall asleep you just want to, well you want to feel as great as you can when all the time just because it feels good <laughs> but it also it also has the effect that um, you've got more chance of kind of touching base or with 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 a higher aspect of yourself. So, you know, I, I think maybe I'm biased, but I, I as I've seen well as I've seen that everyone is going astral when they're out of body. 
Um, when I'm when I often try to pull people out in the beginning, I try to yank them out, you know, without permission, or whatever. And what I found is that people would often relate to me in a drunk way. It's like their astral body is drunk and then they fall asleep again. Wouldn't that infer that our systems are progr- really programmed, in fact, to, to wake up to that? Um, that's my feeling because we're all going out sort of touch base with – that's where we get our energy from. I, I believe the astral body is a bridge body that also uh, gets cosmic energy and brings it back into the physical that's that's part of its role. So I think if it also has the role of waking up and, and to experience things and to experience things consciously, um, I think that'd be good for anyone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I could testify to that too. So it's, it's an amazing yeah, yeah. thing. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. you, you go around teaching people this stuff in like workshops and I mean, just yeah. for um, my audience. So do you mind just sharing at least just like one technique that they could possibly even try tonight, you know, of, of to yeah. Yeah. project from yeah. their body? You know, a really good technique, um, and um, and even people can practice this because on a link I'll give you. I've got there's a couple of videos that you can preview the videos. You can go through the whole videos in this course, but one of them is like chakra breathing. Uh, now, what I found in the astral, and I was taught this early on by by my guide early on, before I'd you know heard of the notion or understood what the whole chakra system was. So just just through conscious awareness, breathing through like the chakras, like breathing down the, the crown chakra and out your heart, front and back, and breathing the infinite universe into the heart, then down. I found through conscious breathing and and clearing the chakras, so I'm, I'm basically breathing through my chakras. You feel really good after doing it. And then for me, that's the primer. And to do that and then to relax your body and your mind as much as you can when you fall asleep at night, to, to, to do it during the day is better, to relax your body and mind, because then you're not so tired at night, then your mind can get more traction. So I prepare myself during the day for astral travel. If I want to travel, then during the day I'll, I'll meditate to relax my body and mind, so that then when I'm going to sleep, I'm not carrying that low-level tension to sleep. So that And then I relax my body and mind, and then I kind of, um, in a nutshell, I kind of carry that uh, intention that tonight I'm going to leave my physical body and um, experience the astral realm. So, and, and really, something that is heart-based is a really great trigger for someone. So say you want to visit a place, you want to visit somebody, you want to experience something that feels good. That is a, that is a really good way to start. So, you know, and that, that way you're kind of getting into a heart space, which is the, the astral driver, and it's not so scary. And... And that way, and even to put it off a week to think, because often people think, oh, gee, I might get in my body tonight. So to think, okay, next week or next Sunday, I'm going to leave my body. So you kind of program yourself over time to get to that point. Then it's less scary. Nice. Cool. You know? yeah. yeah, that's yeah. a good technique. I could try that tonight, hopefully. So, <laughs> you know, so, yeah, so yeah. What's, what's next for you, Greg? Like, what's going on? So you sent me a link. Uh, do you mind talking yeah. about what? what I will send, yeah, that's right, I sent you a link. I've got, look, it's really good. I finally, finally got this, like an online astral course up because a lot of people, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm in Brisbane and I, I travel around Australia a bit doing courses, uh, uh, but like it's not everyone can come to Brisbane. <laughs> to <Yeah. do> courses. <laughs> but there's a lot of people here who are astral traveling and awesome. doing courses. Yeah. <laughs> that's quite funny. But so I've got this online course to <laughs> With kind of now videos and also MP3s nice. you can download and key points and just systematic that you can go through the ways that I found um, it's it's like circling a situation you know it's like there's all ways and I try all different ways you know because we have you know kinesthetic senses some people are more visual some people so it's ways that I found to kind of integrate this whole astral um, concept and. And to just sort of gently sort of move into that state. So, yeah, I found it's helping people. And actually, a couple of people have, while they're doing the course, have had experiences straight away. So, yeah, so the link the link you've got there, um, you can you can go, you can preview it. There's, a, there's even a, a few. That's right, I talk about the scary things in astral travel in one of the previews. And also, I do a meditation that takes you through the breathing and just how I do normal meditation. Um, 
daily and that that's that's a, a, a free video on the course that you can preview so people can look at that it's like a half hour video that people can look at into how i just meditate myself um as people often ask me so yeah well for, next for me is i'm writing another book um oh, which cool, is actually okay. yeah i'm halfway through it's like a, it's actually a fiction book um that is very readable on the same subject about your projection yeah nice. yeah it's really cool. fun, really good fun awesome awesome yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So what Greg even mentioned to me earlier was that this link that I'll be putting on uh, the website, I mean, hopefully the offer is still good, right? But it'll, you'll be giving $50 yeah. off discount for the listeners Absolutely. of the show. Absolutely. So what I'll do Boom. is, yeah, there yeah. you go. I'll put a, um, I'll put a, I'll send you a, um, a, a code and then any, any, any listeners can, um, yeah, they, they can, if they put the code in, they can, um, they can, they can get, get hooked up. <laughs> That's a big discount. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what's, what was your address, your, your website address? So my website is uh, gregdoyleastral.com. Gregdoyleastral.com. Cool. Yeah, look, actually, what I'll do is I'll put up the code now. I will, when is, is, yeah, what I'll do is I'll put the code up. So if anyone puts in um, Josh. Yeah. Okay. They get um, $50. Yeah, we'll, we'll come up with something <laughs> for yeah, a code. Exactly, we'll come up with something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, but, yeah, that'll be on the on the, um, the show notes for sure. So, yeah, yeah. check out his website. is gregdoyleastral.com. And also his book, Awakening the Giant Within, which is found on Amazon.com. Do you know when your your next book's going to come out? You have an Look, idea? I don't know yet. I'm still I'm still so writing, so I, I will get through it in the next while, and then um and, and then get um yeah yeah for get sure. It Maybe so. probably have you on for that too. So. Yeah yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. cool. It's, it's yeah yeah. Book. So you guys, you know, check out his book. And I I, I finished it a couple of weeks ago. I loved it, but before I read the book, I heard his interviews, and I'm like, dude, I gotta get this guy on the show very very good stuff and so you know you guys if you've benefited from this show the flip side in any way and you want to help keep it going uh, you can support me by going to patreon.com slash joshua tongle and any amount whether big or small really helps out a lot you guys and so please don't forget to write a review on itunes it only takes two minutes because it'll help more people discover the show and plus i love reading them too and of course share this interview with your friends and so greg Thanks for being on the show, man, and just sharing your journey. A lot of great insights, fun stuff. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Josh. I really appreciate it, too. I really, you're a great interviewer. Oh, thank you. Oh, great, great guest, <laughs> too. That. Thanks so much, yeah, man. Yeah. So, thank you. So <laughs> All righty, guys, once again, thanks for listening, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. I'm out. Peace. <laughs>